there's a lot of hype around what's in your hospital bag videos. But if you're planning on having a home birth, those videos aren't really that important to you. But what is really important are doing these five things to your home birth space before you go into labor. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you happen to be a newbie just stopping by, welcome, I'm really excited to have you here. My name is Dr. Nicole, I'm a pelvic floor physical therapist, which basically means I work with women's lady parts during pregnancy and after childbirth to make sure everything heals just so. I am also an expecting mom, which is really relevant to this video. I am hoping my third baby is gonna be born in June, but knowing my luck in history, it will probably be July. But whenever that does happen, I wanna make sure that my home birth space is prepared. Since my last home birth with my second son, Zay, we have actually moved. And so there are five different things I'm looking at in this new space to make sure it's ready for this home birth. I'm pretty sure that most of my end stage laboring and hopefully delivery and water birth will happen in my bedroom. So I'm really just looking at my bedroom for this video. Things I'm considering are number one, do I have curtains in this room if I have windows in this room? I do have two big windows. And here at this house, it's not really crucial to have curtains on the windows because the woods are my neighbor and then my sister and brother-in-law are on the other side of the woods. So it's not a big deal to have curtains here. But in my last house, about 50 feet from my window was a sidewalk that was often walked on <laughs> by my neighbors. And especially at night, if the lights were on, you could easily see into my window if I didn't have some sort of a curtain. So I really, really would highly recommend having a curtain. This can also make sure that the room stays dim if you happen to be laboring during the day, but you really want kind of a darker, calm environment or that the curtains can be open if you want lots of light and it gives you a little bit of uh, versatility with the lighting situation. The second thing you wanna consider is decluttering your space. Now, everyone's room size is a little bit different, but no matter how big you think your room is, I guarantee once you get your midwife, maybe a second midwife, a doula, a birth assistant, maybe a photographer, videographer, your support people in the room, that room starts to feel really, really small. I know with my last son's birth, my husband was frantically moving small furniture items out of the room to make more space because it started to get quite stuffy in there very, very quickly. And we thought we had decluttered pretty well. So with this birth, we will be keeping minimal things in the bedroom, especially because we'll be having a water birth and there will be the birthing tub in there. We wanna make sure that the space feels open and everyone can move around safely within that space. Speaking of having a lot of things in your birth space, number three, how are you gonna keep the space cool? Especially if you're planning to have your home birth during the summer months or a warmer time of year, it can definitely start to get pretty warm pretty quickly with all those people breathing, especially because as you progress through labor, at least for me, I get very, very hot towards the end of the laboring as I get into active labor and pushing. And so it's important to have a ceiling fan, a portable fan, uh, AC turned on, a window AC unit, something in the room that you could easily turn on to just get air flowing and moving in the room so that it doesn't feel stuffy and uncomfortable for you as you are laboring. If you don't mind taking a second and hitting that like button, if you're finding this video helpful or interesting, I would really, really appreciate it. As you prepare for your home birth, number four, you need to think about how are you protecting your bed from bodily fluids? So even if you are planning to have a water birth, chances are you might deliver your placenta or you might do some of your early laboring in your bed. Or if there's an emergency, you might end up in your bed, not as you had planned. In this situation, you wanna make sure that your mattress is at, not at risk of getting covered in bodily fluids because during the laboring process, there are lots of bodily fluids happening. But there is a really, really easy, very inexpensive way to protect your bed um, from those bodily fluids. I did a whole video on it, I'll link it above and at the end of this video. And it basically has to do with using a waterproof mattress pad, a fitted sheet, flat sheet, a shower curtain, and another set of sheets on top of that to make sure that your mattress is going to be safe no matter what happens in your bed during the birthing process. And finally, number five, what's in your emergency hospital bag? Now, I know at the beginning of this video, I said your hospital bag doesn't really matter, but if you're planning on having a home birth, those videos aren't really that important to you. And it's true, it matters a whole lot less than someone who is planning to have a hospital birth. But the truth of the matter is, about 12% of home births 
actually end up transferring to the hospital. It's even more increased for first times moms and a little bit less than 12% for um, second, third, fourth, whatever time moms. Uh, but just know there is a chance that you could be transferring to the hospital. And in that situation, it's probably going to be a pretty quick matter. You're probably not gonna have time to pack things up and you're probably gonna want your support person to come with you. So I would say you would wanna make sure you have something in your bag that you could wear home from the hospital. Something for your baby to wear home or those first pictures that you wanna take of your baby, something cutesy for them to wear an extra phone charger because chances are you're gonna be using your phone a lot to tell people about the new baby. And finally, you can't live without personal hygiene products. You wanna make sure you throw those in the bag. Now, most hospitals do have things like extra crunchy toothbrushes for you to use or some off-brand shampoo and whatnot. You will be able to shower and stay clean there, but if there are things that you just can't live without, you love in your daily routine, you wanna make sure that you have those in your bag so that in an emergency or a quick situation, you could grab those things and head to the hospital. What am I forgetting about preparing your home birth space? Throw in the comments anything I didn't mention but you think is super duper important. Now that you know how to prepare your birth space for your home birth, you may wanna check out this video over here about keeping your home birth mess free. I know mess can really scare off a lot of people, but honestly, it doesn't have to be that messy if you just have a few important tools in place to prepare. Thanks so much for watching today. I will see you all in the next video.